Okay, now we're on to diabetes from Pounds and Inches by Dr. Simeons. In an obese patient suffering from a fairly advanced case of stable diabetes of many years duration in which the blood sugar may range from 300 to 400 milligrams, it is often possible to stop all anti-diabetes medication after the first few days of treatment. The blood sugar continues to drop from day to day and often reaches normal values in two to three weeks. As in pregnancy, this phenomenon is not observed in the brittle type of diabetes and as some cases that are predominantly stable may have a small brittle factor in their clinical makeup, all obese diabetics have to be kept under a very careful and expert watch. A brittle case of diabetes is primarily due to the inability of the pancreas to produce sufficient insulin, while in the stable type, diencephalic regulations seem to be of greater importance. That is possibly the reason why the stable form responds so well to the HCG method of treating obesity, whereas the brittle type does not. Obese patients are generally suffering from the stable type, but a stable type may gradually change into a brittle one which is usually associated with a, a loss of weight. Thus, when an obese diabetic finds that he is losing weight without diet or treatment, he should at once have his diabetes expertly attended to. There is some evidence to suggest that the change from stable to brittle is more liable to occur in patients who are taking insulin for their stable diabetes. You diabetics should understand that, I guess. I don't. Rheumatism. All rheumatic pains, even those associated with demonstrable bony lesions, improve subjectively within a few days of treatment and often require neither cortisone nor salicylates. I hope I'm saying that right. Salicylates. Again, this is a well-known phenomenon in pregnancy and while under treatment with HCG plus diet, the effect is no less dramatic. As it does not after pregnancy, the pain of deformed joints returns after treatment. But smaller doses of pain relieving drugs seem able to control it satisfactorily after weight reduction. In any case, the HCG method makes it possible in obese arthritic patients to interrupt prolonged cortisone treatment without a recurrence of pain. This is this in itself is most welcome, but there is the added advantage that the treatment stimulates the secretion of ACTH in a physiological manner and that this regenerates the adrenal cortex, which is apt to suffer under prolonged cortisone treatment. Cholesterol. The exact extent to which the blood cholesterol is involved in hardening of the arteries High blood pressure and coronary disease is not as yet known, but it is now widely admitted that the blood cholesterol level is governed by diencephalic mechanisms. The behavior of circulating cholesterol is therefore of particular interest during the treatment of obesity with HCG. Cholesterol circulates in two forms, which we call free and esterified. Normally, these fractions are present in a proportion of about 25% free to 75% esterified cholesterol, and it is the latter fraction which damages the walls of the arteries. In pregnancy, this proportion is reversed, and it may be taken for granted that arterial sclerosis never gets worse during pregnancy for this very reason. To my knowledge, the only other condition in which the proportion of free to esterified cholesterol is reversed is during the treatment of obesity with HCG plus diet, when exactly the same phenomenon takes place. This seems an important indication of how closely a patient under HCG treatment resembles a pregnant woman in diencephalic behavior. When the total amount of circulating cholesterol is normal before treatment, this absolute amount is neither significantly increased nor decreased, 
But when an obese patient with an abnormally high cholesterol and already showing signs of arterial sclerosis is treated with HCG, his blood pressure drops and his coronary circulation seems to improve, and yet his total blood cholesterol may soar to heights never before reached. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? At first, this greatly alarmed us. I guess it's a bad thing. But when we saw that the patients came to no harm, even if treatment was continued, and we found the same in follow-up examinations undertaken some months after treatment was continued, as we found in examinations undertaken some months before treatment. As the increase is mostly in the form of the not dangerous form of the free cholesterol, we gradually came to welcome the phenomenon. Today we believe that the rise is entirely due to the liberation of recent cholesterol deposits that have not yet undergone calcification in the arterial wall and is therefore highly beneficial. Gout. An identical behavior is found in the blood uric acid level of patients suffering from gout. Predictably, such patients get an acute and often severe attack after the first few days of HCG treatment, but then remain entirely free of pain in spite of the fact that their blood uric acid often shows a marked increase which may persist for several months after treatment. Those patients who have regained their normal weight remain free of symptoms regardless of what they eat, while those that require a second course of treatment get another attack of gout as soon as the second course is initiated. We do not yet know what diencephalic mechanisms are involved in gout. Possibly emotional factors play a role, and it is worth remembering that the disease does not occur in women of childbearing age. We now give two tablets daily of Zyloric, Z-Y-L-O-R-I-C, to all patients who give a history of gout and have a high blood uric acid level. In this way, we can completely avoid attacks during treatment. So I guess that's why they want you, you know, if you have any medical issues, I guess you need to be under a doctor's care so uh, he can prescribe whatever else may be needed during this protocol. Just my put. Okay, blood pressure. Patients who have brought themselves to the brink of malnutrition by exaggerated dieting, laxatives, etc., often have an abnormally low blood pressure. In these cases, the blood pressure rises to normal values at the beginning of treatment and then very gradually drops, as it always does in patients with a normal blood pressure. Normal values are always regained a few days after the treatment is over. Of this lowering of the blood pressure during treatment, the patients are not aware. When the blood pressure is abnormally high and provided there are no detectable renal lesions, the pressure drops as it usually does in pregnancy. The drop is often very rapid, so rapid in fact that it sometimes is advisable to slow down the process with pressure sustaining medication until the circulation has had a few days time to adjust itself to the new situation. On the other hand, among the thousands of cases treated, we have never seen any incident which could be attributed to the rather sudden drop in high blood pressure. When a woman suffering from high blood pressure becomes pregnant, her blood pressure very soon drops, but after her confinement, it may gradually rise back to its former level. Similarly, a high blood pressure present before HCG treatment tends to rise again after the treatment is over, though this is not always the case. But the former high levels are rarely reached, and we have gathered the impression that such relapses respond better to orthodox drugs such as Reserpine than before treatment. Peptic ulcers. Okay, I'm almost done. And then uh, I think it goes on to explain the treatment. Okay. Peptic ulcers. In our cases of obesity with gastric or duodenal ulcers, we have noticed a surprising subjective improvement in spite of a diet which would generally be considered 
most inappropriate for an ulcer patient. Here too there is a similarity with pregnancy in which peptic ulcers hardly ever occur. However, we have seen two cases with a previous history of several hemorrhages in which a bleeding occurred within two weeks of the end of treatment. Psoriasis, fingernails, hair, varicose ulcers. As in pregnancy, psoriasis greatly improves during treatment but may relapse when the treatment is over. Most patients spontaneously report a marked improvement in the condition of brittle fingernails. The loss of hair not infrequently associated with obesity is temporarily arrested, though in very rare cases an increased loss of hair has been reported. I remember a case in which a patient developed a patchy baldness, so-called alopecia areata, after a severe emotional shock just before she was about to start an HCG treatment. Excuse me. Our dermatologist diagnosed the case as a particularly severe one, predicting that all the hair would be lost. He counseled against the reducing treatment, but in view of my previous experience and as the patient was very anxious not to postpone reducing, I discussed the matter with the dermatologist and it was agreed that having fully acquainted the patient with the situation, the treatment should be started. During the treatment, which lasted four weeks, the further development of the bald patches was gone. Was almost, if dang flies, was almost, if not quite, arrested. However, within a week of having finished the course of HCG, all the remaining hair fell out as predicted by the dermatologist. The interesting point is that the treatment was able to postpone this result, but not to prevent it. The patient has now grown a new shock of hair of which she is justly proud. In these patients with large varicose ulcers, we were surprised to find that these ulcers heal rapidly under treatment with HCG. We have since treated non-obese patients suffering from varicose ulcers with daily injections of HCG on normal diet with equally good results. Jay, I wonder if that means uh, uh, varicose veins. That'd be cool. Okay, let's see. Uh, the pregnant male. <laughs> pregnant is like in quotes. When a male patient hears that he is about to be put into a condition which in some respect specs resembles pregnancy, he is usually shocked and horrified. The physician must therefore carefully explain that this does not mean that he will be feminized and that HCG in no way interferes with his sex. He must be made to understand that in the interest of the propagation of the species, nature provides for a perfect functioning of the regulatory headquarters in the diencephalon during pregnancy and that we are merely using this natural safeguard as a means of correcting the diencephalic disorder which is responsible for his overweight. Okay, at that I'm going to stop. Um, I'm, the next section will be technique warnings. All right. See ya.